Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. And there is a word that gets used a lot in regards to games in general, and Star Citizen in particular, and that is immersion. But what does that really mean? What is immersion? And just as importantly, what isn't immersion? Because some people pretty much use the word as if it was meant what is fun. I like it, therefore it's immersive. But let me illustrate the difference. Clue is a popular and enjoyable board game. It really has an excellent board game gameplay, with a good mix of chance, skill, and an ending that does not drag out. But does it actually make you feel like you're inside a mansion solving a murder? Not the least. Gameplay 10, Immersion 0. Monopoly is a famous game, although I have a dim view of the quality of its gameplay, and on top of that, it does not make you feel like you're really a real estate speculator in Atlantic City even less. Chess has more players than any other game on the planet, but it does not really make you feel like you're commanding troops on a medieval battlefield. No, of course not. And novelty attempts in that regard are universally lame. If you ever see a real chess player with one of these, it means that they have a dear friend or family member who couldn't think of anything better to give them. And they have cared enough about the giver not to immediately dispose of it. So, Gameplay Max, Immersion, Zilch. Popular tabletop games took their first huge turn into immersion with Dungeons & Dragons, but the immersion came from the player's shared imagination, not so much from the gameplay itself. Similarly, the early limited computer games like Colossal Cave Adventure or Zork accomplished immersion through the player's imaginations and from words alone. It was immersive literature rather than actually immersive game design. Immersion, in the sense that you are absorbed into a different setting, was at that time still the realm of literature and drama, not really games. But right from the opening tap of that baton and Win Commander won, Chris Roberts put a stake in the ground. This was the start of a movie. A 16-bit low-resolution movie with rudimentary MIDI sound, of course, but an interactive movie. I mean, just look at all the signals they, that is sending you that this is the opening of a movie. And from then on, immersion and gameplay became the two parallel desires of computer games, with each generation of hardware and games increasing it. But bear in mind that very few development efforts serve both masters. So let's take a look at some of the subjects in my recent videos. Skins, immersion or gameplay? Well, pretty much all immersion. Med beds, well, gameplay. Prisons, and that one had about 10 ideas. Some were gameplay, others immersion, but none were both. So no modern game is just gameplay or just immersion. But Chris Roberts has always been about the immersion foremost. Just look at the initial Hi, pitch video Trump. about Ever this game. It's as heavy an immersion pitch as pilot. ever there yeah, could be. They didn't rent and now build a full-scale motion capture studio and bring in A-list live actors and legendary motion capture artists to pay the vandal because it would get the flight model right. I'm not saying that the flight model doesn't have to be right, but if you think all that immersion stuff is just window dressing, you don't understand Chris Roberts' games. You don't get why people love sharing screenshots and creating and watching streams of this game. It isn't because of the flight model. When that PC Gamer article said that CIG was researching bedsheet deformation because, of course, I've never been sure whether the headline writer truly understood Chris Roberts' games or whether they didn't have a clue and were just being snarky. Because when you have invested that much into having Mark Hamill in the room with the player, you damn well straight the bedsheets need to deform when he sits on them, because otherwise you've just wasted your company's most unique advantage. So, since immersion is important to nearly all modern computer genres, particularly an emphasis with Chris Roberts' games, I'd like to drill down into the specifics of what actually makes for immersion, particularly immersion in a Chris Roberts game. And that boils down to what I call the four pillars of immersion. First, visual detail, also called fidelity. As much as possible, there should be as little detail missing as possible. Nothing should look out of place with its surroundings. The digitized characters cannot look less or more detailed than the environment that they are in. Nothing should look out of place whatsoever, or your eye will be drawn immediately to it. Last weekend, I visited an exhibition of costumes and props from the new House of Dragons series at the L.A. County Museum of Natural History, and the detail on the costumes 
was amazingly perfect. Details which at most shots at 4K would never be noticed. But if the camera moved in on the tightest of close-ups, that detail would be there. In the game, you can look closely at your armor or your weapon, and there is still enough detail there. That takes work. It takes work to have a whole procedural planet that does not show tiling from orbit. Other recent games have surrendered on completely achieving that. Look at the original Wing Commander, and despite the system limitations, as you move your mouse, the hand moves the joystick. That gave everybody a real wow factor, believe it or not, at the time, even though it had nothing to do with gameplay. And if it is in your view, you will see that your character's hand is moving on the joystick as you move your mouse. It's still there, more realistic, and still just as superfluous to gameplay, but necessary for immersion. The second pillar of immersion is diegetic action. By this I mean action that occurs in the world itself. Whenever possible, we act on things in the world directly. Buying things, using trade terminals, touching switches, picking things up, using our handheld devices. In the original Wing Commander, you touched the leaderboard and you saw the leaderboard itself. Clicked on people to talk to them. When it came to the saved games, they could have just done a numbered list like every other game. But even with so little graphic resources, they took you to a bunk room where empty bunks and yes, of course, to form sheets, with even a completely superfluous leak dripping into a bucket. The new UI cards show that CIG's goal is to make the user interface even more diegetic still. Diegetic action feeds directly into the third pillar immersion, continuous presence. Prior to Star Citizen, hardware limits required that there be individual scenes, but they were intentionally arranged, so they gave you an impression that you were connecting from one to the next, briefing room to corridor, corridor to cockpit, cockpit to launch. But with Star Citizen, Chris Roberts made a bold promise. No cutscenes. And they made good on that promise. From bed to pad to launch to anywhere inside your ship to anywhere across the planet to anywhere across the star system without a cutscene. And if you don't think that that's a huge accomplishment, just look at other games since Star Citizen have abandoned similar ambitions with the sour grapes of, well, that isn't all that important anyhow. Elite Dangerous Odyssey had to give up on interiors and have the cutscene from pilot seat to surface. Starfield will have automated transitions planet to space and space to planet. In fact, a truly huge part of the effort in server meshing is, in fact, to allow you to be handed off from server to server with the same no cutscene promise intact. So yes, server meshing is a networking technology. But a lot of the specifics about what is making them do it the way it is being done is driven by the immersion goal of continuous presence. The fourth and final pillar of immersion is verisimilitude, a term I introduced in my recent video on presence. A good synonym for it is authenticity, but authenticity can apply to real world things and nonfiction stories, whereas verisimilitude applies strictly to works of fiction. It applies mostly in three areas. First, do places we visit seem like real places? Mostly they do, but I did have a grumble about Orison, as any professional engineer or architect would have made the primary way of keeping people at a safe altitude would have been passive, in other words, neutral buoyancy, rather than a mechanical system of thrusters. But apart from that, all our settings have a high degree of believability. The second is the characters, the mission givers and key characters in Squadron 42. Even back in Wing Commander 1 days, the characters only spoke via text and were clearly broad stroke war story cliches, but they were reasonably believable. But the goal of verisimilitude was what drove the Wing Commander series to live action and top acting talent, and now to mocap. Verisimilitude is the reason, even if you're a most gameplay focused player, you're still bothered by NPCs just standing around. And the final part of verisimilitude is organizational verisimilitude. Does the advocacy behave like a believable law enforcement system? The jails like believable jails, the gangs of pyro like believable frontier lawless societies, the UEE like a believable government. This is mostly the lore team's job and they've done an admirable job of it, only shadowed when gameplay demands impose something on them like the regeneration system. So when someone, as inevitably happens, say, why are they working so much on this rather than say the net code or the flight model or careers or whatever, the response from the informed members of the community is that people who work on one of these areas have no skill set for working on the other area. Game development stopped being a monolithic skill ages ago. But more than that, CIG does control the staffing distribution, and the core reality is that immersion is a co-dominant force in game design, and that Chris Roberts has always had his reputation being to push immersion to the next level in games. 
Now, for an update on our Grow the Channel ship giveaway. As of recording, we're at 85% of the subscriber goal and 78% of the membership goal to give to some lucky player their choice of the Anvil Liberator, that ship shifting ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey, that long length look ahead launcher lorry. One entry per video, members, you're entered automatically. And if the winner is a member as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing time, Remember that if you've let your membership expire, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the second pillar of immersion. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Danny Raymond for A's Guide.